functional constipation in kids, which is, which is very common nowadays. Next slide, you can see this. Yeah, so let's go some data. It is very common. I feel it is a tip of iceberg because many kids are suffering from functional constipation, but they don't have inside, neither have their parents. Approximately 5 to 30 percent of the child population. And mostly it's affect the old age group from the, from the infant to uh, from the infant to adolescent. And as I mentioned, it can be underdiagnosed because no one has sites. And uh, sometimes they come uh, as a referral like uh, on and off abdominal pain or they have some behavioral problem like my kid is not eating, my kid is throwing tantrum, he is very food fussy, he vomits out frequently or uh, he has on and off tummy pain or he is uh, finding some reason for not go to school, so and so, or so and so is uh, avoiding a toilet. Uh, so it is a very complicated thing. It's not that much serious that a patient will come to emergency at 12, at 2 a.m. But it's not that much. Uh, 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 but still, it is a problem. And the thing is that could timely identify and avoid the complication. So constipation doesn't mean that if child is not passing the stool for two to three days, we call it constipation. Sometimes constipation still is there is if child is passing stool with difficulty. If he is a paining while they're passing the stone, straining while they're spine, passing the stone, stool, getting some fissures around the perineal area, or uh, he is not evacuating empty uh, uh, proper bowel. So there's a lot of uh, things uh, which are uh, things that are constipation. And sometimes, uh, especially when the child is grown up after the three to four year of age, and uh, where uh, he start the constipation and parents don't have any idea because what they said that when my kid uh, 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 when my kids want to go for loo I just uh, uh, send him to the loo and he when he done he asked me to clean it up so parents don't see it or observe it because child is getting over and child wants to become independent by themselves so there are lots of reasons, but uh, see the first thing I need to mention you, functional constipation is a diagnosis of exclusion, I must say. Okay, each and every tummy pain, each and everything, uh, constipation cannot be functional constipation. Before it labeling it functional constipation, we need to make sure that we are or we should all excluding other uh, other some dangerous conditions. Mostly functional constipation. Start at the start at the three to four point of life. First thing, uh, it it can start after the at the time of winning period when the child is going to winning from the breast milk to food winning food. So this is a time that the child may get an abnormal bowel movement. Second thing, functional consequence start at a time of toilet training. See the toilet training is very distressing for the child and most of uh, Adult home are uh, fitted with the adult side commode. And then um, that uh, adult side commode may child find it difficult to see, see it or feel scary. Or sometimes there are lots of toilet accidents within the family and parents get uh, angry on the child is scolding. So they try to hold the potty when it comes because sometimes subconsciously they feel that oh, I'm, I'm passing the potty or I'm uh, uh, urinating. That's why my mom is scrolling me. So at that time, the, at the time of toilet training, it is very possible that a functional constipation can develop. Second, third part is at the starting of the school. When the child leaves the home and go to the school, the stay, initially they find it the school very unfamiliar place, and uh, uh, he they hesitate to go to the washroom because some some peer pressure or some fear of unknown thing. And third is a fourth is a most common after the viral illness. Any viral illness can lead to the functional constipation, post-viral recovery. So these are the four phase where we generally uh, find it a uh, starting point of the functional constipation. It is a general, it is not a rule, but there are other factors also, but these are the more common. Uh, so as I mentioned in the UK, next slide. Uh, as I mentioned to you that uh, uh, before labeling the functional constipation, 
it's a functional constraint we need to rule out all the other things so what we need to look out we first we need to look out the red flag signs red flag sign means if you finding that sign and then there may be something else if, uh, else is there which is causing such a problem See the constipation starting from the birth or few weeks of life so the, the constipation starting from the first of few weeks of life may be possibly due to the Hirschsprung disease possibly due to cystic fibrosis possibility of the hypothyroidism a lack of second is a failure or delay in passing the meconium it is a common characteristic of the Hirschsprung disease okay you know what is a Hirschsprung disease right i don't I'm not going to detail into the hospital this year because we are focusing on constipation. Or is a ribbon stool. Means there is a ribbon type of stool and a, a child may find it difficult. Then it is also possible to have a hospital disease or a lower spine abnormality. Weakness in the leg and locomotor. Delay. See the thing is that uh, lower spine abnormality like spina bifida or a um, seal or any uh, lower back or leg weakness, which uh, see that the, the, the spinal level, lumbar and sacral spine area have a control of oh, control over the bowel and bladder. So if there is something happens at a lower spine level, level, it may affect the lower limb uh, locomotion and it may impact on the bladder and bowel function. So that's why you are many people are saying that the person suffering from spina bifida has a no control of uh, Bowel bladder or CP case have a loss of constipation. Okay, so these are the pathology. Third thing, the abdominal distance vomiting. Sometimes acute intercellular obstruction or some intra abdominal pathology uh, like intussusception or we say the uh, volvulus or some sort of uh, any pathology may lead to abdominal distance and vomiting and followed by data. Uh, it is not passing. So these are some dangerous signs that we need to take emergency action. Like abnormal appearance of anus. See the anorectal malformation. Anorectal malformation is a very common cause. Uh, not, I'm sorry, not very uncommon, but uh, it can present as a constipation because sometimes uh, in the infancy where the uh, anorectal area is very small to doctor or doctor or, or any pediatrician may not be able to find it, but it can be possible. So in that case, if you feel that, uh, that uh, abnormal appearance in the anus around like with the Sacral dimple or something, a, a scar mark or any fistula. We need to do some imaging uh, study with dye and uh, need to find out what kind of malformation. Mal yeah, see the abnormal examination of spine, as I mentioned earlier, and abnormal neuromuscular signs of replication. See, again, if any lower motor neuron this is present on the lower limb or upper motor neuron, so the, any problem with the neuromuscular system can lead to the constipation. Right, so these are some red flags, and we need to roll out before leveling into the functional constipation.